Hey guys, Scott, the Coda guy here, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Airtable Lite Pack for Coda to create beautiful dashboards out of your Airtable data right inside Coda. So I have this Airtable base built full of Star Wars characters. We're going to draw this information into Coda and then make a dashboard and some summary tables out of it. I'm going to do some kind of Coda wizardry and automation later on, so you'll want to stick around to see that. But first, let's just get our Airtable pack working. Uh, right now, the best way to go about bringing in Airtable data into Coda is through the Airtable light pack built by Leandro Zubreski. So I'm going to do slash and then Airtable, and it will come up as Airtable light. You can also do that in insert packs if you're more comfortable with that and I'm going to type an air table light boom um, here I'm already signed in so I'm actually going to remove this from the doc so you can see kind of how to sign in for here so let's go to packs and we're going to search air table light there it is I'm going to sign in to add the doc I'm already signed in but I'm going to add a new account to show you what this looks like uh, I'm going to add a new account I gotta get my API token. Where do I find this? Where you find this is you go to Star Wars characters. Uh, you're going to select your account in the top right. Account. You're gonna head on down and then you're gonna copy this right here. So you're gonna copy that and then you're gonna paste it right into your token here. Boom. Continue. Uh, you and anybody this doc is shared with, and then you're just saying who can take actions. The Airtable light pack does have actions, so if you want other people to be able to update records or send webhooks, you'll want to choose anyone this doc is shared with. Now that I have that in, I have my options over here. What do I want to do with my Airtable light pack? Well, right now I want to bring in a table. I want to bring in my table of Star Wars characters. So choose what to sync. When I press that on the right hand side over here comes up a base ID and a table ID. It also has an optional criteria for a view. If you want to add a view and only sync that view specifically, you're going to want to use that. Today we're not going to do that, um, but I'll show you how to get that view ID anyways. So let's go get our base and our table ID. When we go to Airtable, we're going to find up in the URL three different strings of information. The first is this APP and then a list of numbers. The next is TBL and then a string of numbers. And then the next is VIW and a string of numbers. This is the base ID, this is the table ID, and this is the view ID. I think of it because TBL is just like table and VIW is just like view. So first let's copy paste, command copy, and put it into our base ID. And then let's go to command copy and then let's go to our table now that we have that i can add my view if i like also from the url but we're not going to do that today we're just going to start sync and in three two one here we go this is what you get when you first sync it uh, first you get the record chip it's just kind of like the raw data from Airtable. we don't need to do really much with that so i'm just going to hide it and then we get the time it was created and then we get this long gibberish called fields so now you can see in here, it says eye color, brown, species, human, gender, male. We want to draw the information out of here into distinct columns. We can do that quickly and easily. We go to the column options all the way down and we do separate as JSON. That will now give us each one of these as fields. You do not want to delete this because it will break all of these. So if I delete this, You'll see that it breaks each one of these. We need that fields gibberish field. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide it. Great. Now I've got each of my fields from Airtable. I'm going to move this over because I like name first. Um, and you might want to rename these. They all get appended with fields. So I might just call this name, eye color, uh, species, and then let's do this one, homeworld. All right, now that I have each one of my uh, fields in here, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to make sure my settings are set to this so that it syncs all the time. By default, if you go to settings, if this isn't up, I can do that with options. Airtable light settings. Right now it's set to refresh manually. You can do that with this little wheel here. But you want to refresh this automatically so it's always in sync with Airtable. So I'm going to choose hourly. And if you have a large Airtable base, you may have only had the first thousand covers, but it syncs by default. But you can choose 10,000 instead. So we're going to keep that there as is. And we're going to call this Star Wars characters. Okay. 
All right, so that is simply how you use the Airtable Lite Pack and how you bring in its information. But now let's look at kind of how to use this to create what I call a summary table. I find myself creating these a lot when I bring in Airtable data, um, so I thought you'd walk you through it as well. A summary table, let's say we wanted to kind of get a summary of uh, species and characters by their home world. And we wanted it to be relationally uh, created, right? We don't want to just group this, which we could. We could group it and kind of see, okay, who's in Naboo? Um, but I want a summary table for different reasons. So let's go here and we're going to first create a table. Um, and I'm going to call this homeworld summary. And now we're going to call this homeworld. All right. What we're going to do now is we're essentially going to create a formula to compare these two tables to see what they don't have in common and then therefore when and where to update them. So I'm going to do a canvas based formula. Once I'm in my canvas, which is this space below the table, I'm going to press the equals button and that brings up a formula editor. And now I'm going to say Star Wars characters dot filter. What that means is go look into the Star Wars characters table and find some rows. I want to find the rows where homeworld, that's a list, um, is in homeworld summary dot homeworld dot not. So notice when I don't have the dot not, I'm saying, hey, go look at the homeworld column in Star Wars table and find out uh, where those is in this, right? Right now it's returning nothing. We can see this down here is our return value and it's returning nothing because, well, there's nothing in here. Let's see what happens if we put uh, Tatooine. I think that's spelled right. Yep, if I put Tatooine, you'll see that some of them are in there now. But what I want to do is say not because I want to figure out where they not synced. We got to find out where they're not synced. All right, so that's where they're not synced now. Um, and now I'm gonna do this. And I am going to call this uh, need to sync. Sometimes they don't name themselves, so I'm going to double check that. All right. And now, all right, so now I have a lot here, right? 47. I have a ton of rows, but I don't want every single value. I just want the unique home world, right? Because home world is what I'm comparing. Um, that means it's a list of lists, so I'm going to list combine it. And now I'm going to unique it. All right, so those are the unique values or the unique home worlds that are currently not in here. Notice that if I type in Naboo, Naboo disappears. If I type in Sereno, that disappears as well. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to now draw out some summary. So in this, I'm gonna call it all characters. And we're going to say equals to um, Star Wars characters dot filter for where homeworld is equal to homeworld. Bum, bum, bum. That'll draw in every single record. Now we can hide this and we can say um, character count is equal to all characters dot count. So now I know there's 10 characters from Tatooine, 11 from Naboo, and one from Sereno. I'm going to go in here into Naboo and I'm actually going to kind of make that into a table for myself. Um, draw that up. There we go. Done. So now I can see each of these. I'm going to make this friendly for myself, right? I'm going to unhide some columns such as the, I don't need home world. I already know it's Naboo. So I'm going to go to eye color and name and gender right now. I'm going to hide this. Now I know that these characters live in Naboo. All right. Um, now we got to create the automation because we don't want to do this manually, right? We want to do this and update it every single time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this. We already did need to sync. I'm going to now create an automation. My automation is going to essentially sync this to this table. Here we go. Add rule. So I'm going to do it uh, time-based every hour so I can sync as often as I possible. Um, then I'm going to do an if condition because I don't want this to run every single hour if I don't have to. So I'm just going to say if need to sync dot count is greater than zero. So if there are more than zero rows within need to sync, then run. Then what am I going to do? I'm going to, I don't want to do one of these because I actually want to add all of these. So in this case, I'm going to open up my formula window. And now I'm going to run a formula map over that list. So that would be need to sync 
dot formula map. Um, if you don't know formula map and how to use it, you can see I've written some help documentation on that. That's just coda.io slash at simpladoc slash formula map. And that will give you um, kind of an in-depth look at formula map and how to use that. So formula map, what am I going to do over that? I'm going to do a unique uh, action to each item in that list. What am I going to do? I'm going to add a row to homeworld summary to homeworld. And what value do I want to do? I want to add the current value. All right. So this is called sync summary tables. Turn that on and we're going to test that rule now and see what happens. All right. So now if I go down, notice need to sync is nothing. We are all caught up. So there we go, there we go, there we go. I can go and see that NA didn't have a homeworld, that's okay. Uh, three people who lived on Alderaan are Leia and Remus and Antilles. I've got that information now as I want it. Um, might even look a little better as cards. All right, so now that we have our summary table, let's kind of see it in action and how it works. So let's notice if we go to Star Wars characters in Airtable, let's add um, the Coda guy. He may not be from Star Wars, but he, he will be for this time. Blonde hair, and let's say he lives on Earth. All right. So now that's there. I want to manually sync this because this will sync. It synced eight minutes ago, um, and it will sync every hour, but I want it right now. So let's press that sync button manually. It's going to load, load, load. Last sync just now. Go to my summary table. Notice that it's, it's cataloging Earth as in a place that has not been synced yet. So then let's go run our automation and see that work as well. All right, there it is. There's Earth. It's been added. And there's the Coda guy. All right. So now I have a summary table. And that is how, again, you use the Airtable Lite pack. And that is how you make a summary table. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, make sure to follow my channel and subscribe to see more tips like this.